Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode five, CG Labs uh, weekly webinar. Um, let, remind, let me remind everyone of the format. Um, it's 30 minutes every Wednesday at 12.30, where we're going to bring innovation, R&D, technology uh, from some of our partners, customers, consumers, and, and those who are interested in joining the webinar. Um, we're going to have 10, 15 minutes of talking and plenty of time for questions at the end. Whatever medium you're following through, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, please fire your questions in as we go and we can uh, stick them to Jackie at the end. Um, again, just as a, a sort of quick reminder, uh, you can click on the social media that you're using to watch this as a reminder for next week and that will help you obviously uh, see that we're going to be online. Uh, without further ado, I'll quickly introduce who we've got with us today. First over to Mike. Hi folks, um, my name is Mike, as some of you might know by now, I'm responsible for the drone side of things uh, with CG Labs and increasingly feels like uh, Dave's wingman or number two in some kind of weird comedy duo, uh, although sadly it lacks in, lacks in comedy, I think. No, thank you. Uh, and actually, and to keep it, I realised this when I went through and looked at all of the webinars, there is an increasing amount of Scottish people on these podcasts. Uh, so to introduce Jackie McLaughlin from React Tech, uh, over to you. Uh, hi, uh, I, hi everyone. I guess I am another Scottish person uh, based in Edinburgh. I'm the CEO with React Tech Limited. Um, so I guess today we're talking about um, social distancing. So hopefully bring a little bit of um, insight into both the technology and, and specifically what React Tech are doing. Yeah, and I guess it's, I mean, it's a topical conversation. And again, Jackie, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks, not just on uh, workforce tracking, but now specifically social distancing at work and how you can maximize the numbers of people aiming to go back to work and do it safely. So I guess without further ado, let me bring up your slides, Jackie. I'll minimize our video and over to you. view of uh, how people might consider and look at um, managing social distancing using technology and um, but then looking at it at in a little bit more detail to show you specifically um, what react tech have been doing in this space um, so, oops right, technology is not working quite as I thought right so uh, one more try at this just as a, a little bit of an introduction, first of all, uh, I thought I'd give you uh, an overview of the company React Tech. Um, so we were a spin out of Edinburgh University going back to 2001. Um, essentially, um, the technology of interest at the time was in, in looking at vibrations and the impact of vibration on both people uh, and physical things, whether that be building bridges, etc. Um, and since from that initial sort of concept of expertise in, in that topic, we have evolved into an area principally all about monitoring people's, um, monitoring people well in a work condition to some of the risks that they might face while at their workplace. So for us originally, that was exposure to hand arm vibration. Um, and now more recently, we've moved into using our technology with the internet of things type um, tech to go alongside it to then bring other uh, types of risks uh, into play in terms of us monitoring it. Um, if we look at what we've done historically, uh, there are about 70,000 people who are using our monitoring technology and that's spread over um, almost 700 customers and from a range of industry sectors. So we are, we are quite broadly diverse in terms of the areas where people see an interest in wanting to monitor uh, what people are experiencing while in the workplace. So moving this on to um, social distancing. Um, so in terms of how we've approached it, uh, what we've looked to do is to repurpose what we had in existence. Um, so our product happens to be something that is well suited to um, a, work a workspace environment. It will, it will um, be able to handle particularly harsh environments, whether that's because of uh, impacts or exposure to the environment. Um, we are using a wrist-worn device, and, and I'll, I'll take you into the topic of um, what to consider in terms of um, social distancing, what helps and what doesn't help in terms of where you situate your monitor. 
Uh, I've mentioned already the fact that 70,000 people have already used our system. I think another really key area perhaps to take out of this communication is if you're gathering data uh, on people's interactions when it comes to social distancing, it really is important to follow the protocols of GDPR and what that specifically means, especially when it comes to contact tracing. And really when it comes to contact tracing, that is all about holding the data for as long as it is appropriate. So when it comes to COVID-19, um, you should be asking um, yourselves, do you need that data longer than whether it's two weeks or a month? It certainly isn't a long period of time. Uh, and fund fundamentally, I guess, the way we have approached um, social distancing, it's all about thinking about it from the workplace point of view and the employer's point of view in terms of what their responsibilities are relative to the pandemic and how can they best look at those responsibilities. A couple of areas to consider, first of all, one is the detection te technology. So there are a number of different um, radio technologies which will allow you to establish distance. Uh, I've tried to summarize them in this slide between GPS, meaning uh, satellite positioning systems, RFID, uh, which is radio frequencies in particular bands, um, Wi-Fi type setups, Bluetooth, and then lastly, um, ultra wide band technologies. So first of all, GPS is the one which is not suited to indoor environments. Uh, that's basically because you are looking at satellite communications, um, which can't cope with the, the building in terms of penetrating the building. Detection accuracy as a consideration, uh, GPS is the least accurate, again, because of the distance those signals are traveling next followed by Wi-Fi, then RFID, uh, then Bluetooth, and the most accurate of all is ultra-wideband technologies. Now, when you look at that in terms of um, proximity detection or even just contact tracing, where you want to know where people have been, then basically the technologies that are useful to you are ultra-wideband, Bluetooth, or RFID. Um, it's, it's our view certainly when it comes to social distancing because of the pandemic, ultra-wideband technology brings you an accuracy that isn't actually essential. What's more important is actually picking up the detection mm -hmm. and knowing the amount of time that people have spent in close proximity. So if you add all that to other considerations such as the maturity of technologies, and all of such these technologies are robust with the exception of the ultra-wideband, um, if you then think about it in terms of what else do you want to connect to, um, then basically the front runners in this are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, uh, followed by RFID, and then finally consider it from a cost perspective. I, I think ultra wideband is something that will ultimately be in the same sort of cost area as Bluetooth, but just now, just because of its uh, newness to the marketplace, et cetera, and the amount of usage of that technology, it tends to cost just a little bit more. Now, very busy slide here, but I'll try and talk to it reasonably quickly. Um, I think the other consideration for anyone that's looking at such a system um, is to consider what we might describe as an ecosystem. So how does this all come together? Um, so first of all, consider things like device location. Uh, as I mentioned before, we think there is lots of advantage with the wrist, um, and that's really principally twofold. One is the wrist is something that people are quite familiar with having a device on and don't see a reason to take it off. Um, and that really is quite important when you, you want to assure that this monitor is being worn at all time. Um, also, uh, you know, when you move your hands, it actually um, broadens the radius, if you like, of detection of the device versus something that's fixed in a, sim a single position, say, on your torso. Um, and then lastly, you have to think about if this device is giving off alerts, how, how readily are people going to be able to hear or see them or, or sense them relative to what the mounting position is. Different area of consideration is ownership of the device. Again, this might not be straightforward as a consideration. Um, I think when it comes to personal monitoring, one might assume that the best thing to do is to give someone a device. Um, Almost all of these devices are going to need some level of charging to make sure uh, they can be used uh, appropriately in the work environment. 
And then there's the fundamental of it has to be at the work environment if this is a workplace problem that you're trying to manage. So one of the approaches that we, we like to take is to electronically assign products to people um, for their working day rather than have them own it and take it away from the workplace. Um, it's something that our, our history with um, monitoring the vibration uh, has shown that it, it, it works particularly well. Other areas are in and around the data, both the data capturing and the data infrastructure. Um, now, there are a lot of social distancing uh, uh, technologies uh, coming to the marketplace where there actually is no data collection. Um, so essentially, it, it acts as an alert to the individual. Now, essentially, what that does is it puts all of the responsibility of social distancing uh, as, a, as a need on the employee themselves without the employer having that, um, if you like, uh, the feedback to themselves as to whether or not their measures are indeed actually effective in the workplace. Uh, again, based on our years of experience with monitoring a risk such as vibration, the data feedback to the employer is absolutely critical so that they can have that com comfort or confidence um, that they are indeed managing the problem within their workplace. And then lastly, from a data infrastructure point of view, how the data is gathered from the monitor into an environment where you access that data. Um, the more integrated the ecosystem, then the more robust and reliable it's going to be ensuring that you do get that data. Um, and given that this is data uh, which involves identifying people, is very much subject to GDPR, and therefore it should be resilient to the transmissions and means by which you get that data to an easily accessible place to analyze it. Um, when you bring in third party devices to that play, whether that's a, a mobile phone app or some other a Wi Fi network that, that, that um, you perhaps don't have full control on, then there's a, a resilience consideration in terms of how reliable is your data transmission. So I'll move us into just quickly going over uh, what it is that React Tech have done. So uh, we have essentially upgraded our existing technology to make it suitable for this application. Uh, there's three elements of our technology that come into play. Um, what we call the haveware is simply the personal monitoring device. Um, so it's Bluetooth enabled and it will detect the distance between uh, another haveware device our analytics is the term that we use for our, our software. It's basically a hosted uh, database environment uh, and all the communications to that database environment we're fully in control of as an integrated system. The third element to our system is, is not um, uh, something that's an essential part of the system. But basically, if you bring into play our Razor device, as we call it, it's essentially an IoT communication hub it can pick up data from the hardware so that you get that, that information more quickly uh, than the process whereby you take the device back to its docking station and it transmits the data at that point. So it's, it's a within the day means of getting access to the data. What it also does bring, however, is positional information because the racer is empowered um, with a, a, G, a, a GPS capability. The hardware is not. Um, now, one thing to consider when you look at social distancing is, do you need the positional information in order to manage someone safely with respect to social distancing? In essence, you don't. Um, so you do need to know when people have been close together because that's when they, they come at risk. Where they went, where they were, when they had that proximity is not necessarily essential unless you're concerned about things like having to clean down the areas where people have been. Um, so again, just a little bit more detail on our product to um, show you by imagery what it looks like. Um, so we believe it's a, a particularly convenient product to deploy. And we say that because of having over five years experience of the product in the market for it, its purpose of vibration. It has vibratio alerts and also audio alerts to alert the individuals uh, when they come into proximity. And as I've mentioned before, with it being mounted on the wrist, it has a, a good range of, of, of coverage um, to be able to detect people uh, being close to them. All radio signals um, have transmission problems through the, through the body. 
Um, so it's important to consider um, the extent to which you know, the coverage is of the technology that you choose. Um, as I've mentioned, if you bring a Razor device into the mix, then it can also do um, data gathering within the day, um, which it, can, it, it um, transmits via mobile phone technology uh, to our, our hosted environment. The Razor is a device that can be assigned to an individual, so it can be in the hands of a supervisor as they go about their work, checking uh, any records that have been collected uh, by the hardware during the working day. It also will detect itself, its proximity to another React Tech device, so the supervisor can have that, that assurance that, that they themselves have that, that bit of a help in terms of knowing when they get too close to people. Um, but it can also be wall-mounted and simply act as a communication hub where you can define its location and then you're, you're gathering data on the hardware that comes close to that location. Um, now, since we've been uh, in this space for the last um, sort of couple of months and we've, we've worked more closely with the clients, there's a couple of other features that they have asked to come into play, which I think, again, are, are quite useful to sort of recognise the benefits of it when it comes to social distancing as a challenge. Um, the first is cohorts. So from a cohorts perspective, what it's all about is recognizing that in some workplace practices, it is almost impossible for um, a number of people to not work together. So you, you, you create what's called a cohort of critical workers who work within the uh, controlled cohort, but not outside that cohort. And so as, as, a, as a mini team, if you like, they will not alert each other. But when they go close to other individuals or other teams, you will see the alerts come into play. Um, and then you can apply your own control measures to make sure that you minimize the amount of time that people are in the cohort. And you will do things like ensure that those cohorts always stay together. They might have the breaks together um, and they might even travel to work together um, to help you. And manage that cohort environment. Somewhat similar but different at the same time, uh, we're also creating what we are calling safe zones. Um, now, we have within our device also RFID technology. So we are using uh, an RFID tag as a physical identification of a space that you can consider yourself safe within. Um, there is a lot of practice coming into play of putting up perspex screens, etc., to provide safe areas of work, which indeed they are as far as the virus is concerned. But again, any radio wave technology is going to transmit most likely through that barrier and suggest that the place isn't safe. So with the use of the RFID to tag on to the physical um, separation, uh, and because that's where you would mount the RFID tag, what we'll do is we'll switch off the detection of, of proximity, but we keep a record of how long someone has been in that unsafe place, or sorry, how, so, how long someone has been in the safe zone. And we are adding bits of functionality, for instance, if um, someone comes out of the safe zone and forgets to recognize that by a tagging uh, event, uh, then you can set a timer for that safe zone such that it automatically switches back on should someone forget to, to do that detection. Next slide here is really just giving you a, a, an indication of the sort of data that we will be gathering uh, in our system is far, part of our connected worker platform. So you're seeing some of the other areas that, that we look into between hand arm vibration, location information, noise, um, uh, and a few other um, areas that we pull data together within our, our platform. So for um, workforce contact, uh, one of the first reports that we have is basically giving you a list by individual um, and giving you details of the extent to which there has been contact. So you see the total time that they have been in contact with others, the average time per day, um, the short contact is something that's configurable. And essentially through our, again, our work with our, our beta clients, um, they have they have essentially brought the desire of this being an indication of behavior. And if there's only short contact, again, for a configurable time, so let's say less than half a minute, then they consider that as good behavior because essentially someone's been alerted and then they've, 
they have moved away and that's why the contact has been brief and has been short. Um, so they recognise that as good behaviour and to their employees, they don't see this as a problem. Where they want to be spending their efforts on is when the contact is for more extended periods of time. So first of all, you can indicate something as being moderate and then something is being sustained and sustained. Um, again, is a configurable time. So some are looking at it as being 15 minutes um, as sort of recommended by the World Health Organization. Other companies are, are looking at much briefer uh, interaction because again, this is your risk. Uh, the longer you are in close proximity to another individual, the higher the risk of being able to um, contract um, the disease. And it's essentially then moderate is just the time in between those lower and upper limits. Um, so this is the sort of summary data for individuals. So you can change the period that you're looking over um, and then you'll see within that period how many days you were using it, when they were last seen on the system. If you look into the detail um, by this button here, it would then give you a list of, uh, for that individual, who are the other people that they have been in contact with, um, when did it happen and how long. And this is more as really getting into the contact tracing details of looking at your workforce patterns and why and when people are, are coming together. So that again, as an, as an employer, you can start to look at how can I make that safer? Why did they have to come together at those times um, and, and look at making different types of arrangements. Um, within our software, you can also do things like add interventions if you see behaviour you think is inappropriate, and then there is an intervention and discussion with the individual, you can record that sort of information within the system. Adding the Razor um, product into the portfolio then simply means that as well as all that granularity of time, um, uh, in terms of how often and how long you then bring in location information. And really just to finish off, um, hopefully I've stayed within or close to my 10 minute remit. Um, where this all comes from or where this comes together in terms of what React Tech are doing is we see this as um, part of a, a much longer term um, approach to the workplace and, and managing the workplace environment. So the term that we like to use is the connected worker. Um, it's bringing together a number of possible risks in the workplace into a single data platform uh, to be able to analyze that sort of information. Um, but it's also bringing in concepts like the lone worker and all of the sort of functionality that's needed um, in terms of helping people who are at work on their own, whether that's panic alarms or simply detecting something like a man down situation. Now that we've started to bring in, um, you know, through social distancing, just a broader consideration of contact tracing, another tightly aligned uh, area for that is both um, people plan interface and identifying when people are close to potentially dangerous equipment, um, but also exclusion zones for keeping people away from dangerous equipment. Um, so we are now gradually building up an extended roadmap um, from all of these considerations, and it will all essentially uh, be things that we add on to and complement um, the devices that we're currently using um, for the, the social distancing. And I guess just to finish it all off uh, and to sound quite repetitious, um, so from a reactive point of view, um, this has been us taking a particular offering that was already in the marketplace and, and well used within the marketplace and repurposing it for social distancing. It's a combination of taking a personal monitor uh, that helps the individual have that comfort of, I will be alerted uh, if I'm unaware of somebody coming into my personal zone. Um, and we are seeing a very positive reaction from the individuals themselves that that's a good thing, um, that they will be reminded of, of, of that um, scenario. And then it's probably equally importantly, it's about getting the information of people coming into close proximity and bringing that back to the employer in a manner that allows them to look at how can they make the workplace a safer place to work? What are the reasons behind either particular individuals or particular times of the day resulting in a lot of people coming together 
on how can we then design safer places of work for our work uh, employees. Um, as a, a system to install, it is a fully integrated system. Um, it is essentially come out the box and it's ready to use. There's uh, little or no interaction with your existing IT system. Um, many people regard it as a software as a service um, offering. And then, as I say, lastly, this for us is all part of a long term roadmap for the connected worker and bringing data to employers on essentially what's going on in the workplace uh, around their workforce. So that, that concludes the presentation, David. Jackie, that was, uh, that was um, really, really interesting. Um, I must admit when uh, I've been interested in other uh, webinars that we've done before from a drone related point of view, um, and I was keen to hear more, but I'm, I'm, I've surprised myself by uh, how many things I can relate to uh, in what you've discussed. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, I, I used to work uh, on construction sites before uh, I joined CG Labs, uh, so I can identify with a lot of, of what you've talked about. Um, the first question is, how have you found or how have your clients found the workforce reacting to this, the fact that they have to wear a device that potentially uh, you know, tracks their location, I know that uh, construction workers can be quite a belligerent bunch, and the idea of somebody knowing, you know, where they are, when they're on site, off site, how many hours they've worked, uh, etc., um, I can anticipate causing issues. Um, absolutely, um, and it, for us, it's not new because the same applied uh, when we were monitoring them for vibration. There's a reaction that says, "Oh, somebody knows uh, how much or how long I'm working." Um, and it's essentially about good employee communications uh, and basically trying to educate them on just the you know how how much the danger is in terms of if you're not wearing such devices or how how important it is that the device can do in terms of helping you in in your work. Um, if we go back to the example of the vibration, a lot of people get quite complacent with it because they think it takes a lot of time for it to emerge as a, as a harmful situation. It can happen as quickly as six months. In the case of COVID-19 and social distancing, there is there can be this attitude of, oh, well, it won't happen to me. Uh, but certainly when you look at the statistics, um, you know, it is quite horrific how quickly it went through this country. Mm. And a lot of people do expect it to come along for a, a, a second wave. So it's about educating the employees to the dangers so that they can see the potential benefits of having the technology there as a help to them rather than the opposite. Okay. Um, when somebody new arrives on site, how long is the, the, the sign-in process from, they obviously you know, have to sign in the site register, et cetera, but how, how quickly can they be assigned uh, a wristband uh, and, and get, on their, get on their way? Um, assigning a wristband is a question of programming them an RFID card. Um, so that is, you know, it's minutes. It's minutes. Okay. It's an easy piece of um, application software on a PC. Uh, for a lot of companies, they already have existing RFID cards that we can actually be compatible with. Okay. And the, the once the site's set up and running, how big is the, the, the charging station or, or wherever these wristbands uh, are stored? Um, I'm just envisaging a site that's going to be, you know, two, three hundred people on site. Um, how big is we, yeah. when they walk in? What do they see when they, they're picking up the wristband? Um, well, the device itself that goes in the docking station is actually that size. Um, so we put 15 of them in one, which is about an A4 size of paper. Okay. Uh, and last question, the what's the largest site you've uh, had a client deploy these on in terms of workforce to date? Um, it's about a thousand people is our, our biggest deployment. Wow. That's impressive. And I think we just had one come in on the social mic, which was interesting, asking about children, schooling and social distancing. And I suppose it, it lines up with one of the questions I wanted to ask about what other sectors, as well as construction, where do you see this product going? Yeah. Oh, I, I would say that our, we are very much a workforce environment. Um, I mean, for um, applications such as schools, etc. I think there are fairly low cost, just buzzing devices out there. Um, now, it's not where we're pitching ourselves just now because, you know, for us, it's all about informing the work, 
the employer of the data and what they can do with that data. And we see it therefore as a somewhat more sophisticated system than might be uh, really what you need in a, in a school environment. But within a workforce or a workplace environment, we are really not seeing any limitations. Um, you do get some environments where there's a lot of reflection of radio signals. Um, and that's about having the settings within the device that you can basically turn things down um, so you don't get over detection. Um, and so we, we're finding that's been reasonably successful even in areas for, such as steel manufacturing where there's a, a lot of reflective surfaces. Jackie, I could keep talking for, for ages on this, uh, but unfortunately we've hit our 30 minutes. So how can people get in touch with you? Um, well, if you just visit, visit our website um, at reacttech.com, uh, there's places there where they can find out how to get in touch with us. Brilliant. From me, thank you very much for joining uh, the webinar today. Hope it was useful for you. It's definitely for me. No, nope. um, it's been good. I totally enjoyed it. Thank you. Good. And then for anyone who is watching or watching this uh, live or afterwards, next week we've got uh, Tamlin Wilton Gurney on, who's going to discuss completely different to what we've been looking at previously. Can the events industry bounce back? And she's got some technology she wants to talk us through, uh, which again is going to be another interesting one. So we'll hopefully see you next week. Guys, thanks very much for coming on uh, and good day.